In this video, we will be exploring Devil's Punch Bowl, the wave carved coastal cave. Starting from the Oregon map, we will be going to the central coast. This landmark sits between the towns of Depot Bay and Newport. Devil's Punch Bowl State Natural Area is a five acre park that includes the Punch Bowl and the surrounding beaches. The main point of interest is this collapsed sea cave carved out by the ocean. The easiest way to enjoy Devil's Punch Bowl is from above. Parking is right next to an accessible fenced off viewpoint. Cliffs and unpredictable waves can make this a very dangerous place. This was shot during low tide, where the punch bowl is mostly empty of water. During this time, people can enter the punch bowl through a cave at the beach below. There are two cave entrances. The west entrance goes right into the ocean, while the north entrance goes to the beach and is dry at low tide. At high tide, the cave completely fills with water. Entering should be done with caution, as waves can come in at any time. The other way to enjoy Devil's Punch Bowl is a short trail to Ottercrest Beach. In addition to the Punch Bowl, this is a nice beach to visit. There are many ocean rock formations, including Gull Rock, which you can see in the distance. Gull Rock is a habitat for many seabirds, as well as seals. This is one of many sea rocks that makes up Oregon Island's National Wildlife Refuge. It is a little far to do bird watching, but some wildlife can be seen from the beach. At low tide, there are many tide pools worth looking at. The beach is also enjoyed by surfers. After checking out the beach, you can head south to see the cave entrance to Devil's Punch Bowl. The terrain to the cave is a little tougher than the sandy beach. The various slippery rocks should be approached with a bit of caution. A couple places you might have to choose between climbing or getting wet. After a little scrambling, you arrive at a huge cave entrance. As long as it is low tide, it is mostly safe to enter. The punch bowl can look very different depending on the time of day and season. This video was all shot during low tide, but my friend over at Moonstruck Exploring was there during high tide. You can see the difference in this shot from him. As you can see, it would not be good to get caught in the punch bowl when the waves come in. This landmark is similar to the famous Thor's Well. The big difference is that rather than basalt, the rock is sandstone, which erodes much faster. 
The two sea cave entrances slowly eroded into one connected cave. Eventually, the waves eroded so much sandstone that the ceiling collapsed, forming the big skylight. In addition to sandstone, there is also siltstone. Both rocks erode very easily and are still being carved by waves today. There are two interesting things here that I read about and couldn't find. One was that rock-boring clams dug holes into the rock here. The other being that fossilized wood is present in the punch bowl. If you end up visiting, try looking for these things. On the wet rocks are colorful combinations of minerals, algae, and lichen. They almost look like petroglyphs or pictographs, but they are naturally formed. The cave entrance to the sea should be watched closely as that is where the dangerous waves would come from. After low tide, the waves that form this landmark will start to fill in the cave. This opening is where the entire punch bowl started as a small cave. Erosion continues to occur and will one day remove this landmark entirely. Be sure to leave the cave in time before high tide comes in. If you can only visit one time, I would recommend low tide so you can explore the cave. But seeing it at high tide from above would be worth a visit too. Either way, this wave carved coastal cave is a must see on the Oregon coast. I hope you enjoyed this look at Devil's Punch Bowl. Tune in again to explore more of Oregon with me.